Okay, so let's move on to the next big lesson, focus. It is a huge part of mental toughness, and here's what I mean by the word focus. It's what you direct your mind to think about and put your attention on. Now, you might have also thought of the word concentration. And when I said focus, right? And that goes hand in hand with focus. We use concentration to mean how strongly or how much mental energy you put your focus onto something. Now, you'll see what I mean uh, by that as we go on. The truth is you might not only need strong concentration for very short periods of time for most sports, but all sports need to know how to use their focus effectively. So here's the thing about us athletes. You already know how to focus. You do it all the time. How many of you have read more than two pages of any book at any time without stopping? How many of you have watched an entire 30 minute or longer TV show or movie without leaving it? How many of you have played a video game for at least five minutes without doing anything else? Right, everyone. This is more focus ability than you will ever need to be able to do your sport really effectively. Even people who've been called ADD or ADHD can play video games and watch movies for hours if they're totally interested in it. The problem is that we have some kind of interference to our being able to use our natural ability to focus. I keep coming back to this, right? Performance equals potential minus interference. And focus is a type of performance. So what is the interference? Well, it's either you don't really want to be here, you're not interested, or it's basically a bunch of useless thoughts floating around up there in your head. Some people call them negative thoughts. See, here's the deal. You have way more brain power than you need to be very effective at your sport. You can do math and science problems and read and you learn all sorts of things that are far more complex than anything you have to learn in your sport or use while doing your sport. Now, I like to use the analogy of a car. And if your brain were a car, you'd be like a Ferrari, high powered and designed to go up to 200 miles an hour whatever that is, kilometers per hour, out on the open highway. And you really only need like a 1956 VW Bugs worth of power to do your sport. Brain power, that is. See, your Ferrari brain has more thinking and processing ability than you could possibly need to do your sport effectively. And it's designed to use that power anyway. Who here has ever been able... Who here has ever been told to stop overthinking? And if you don't know how to do that, do you stop overthinking? Because nobody tells you how to stop overthinking, do they? Well, guess what? I don't know how to do that either. And I'm the mental toughness trainer. If you've got 20 years to go meditate with the monks up in the Himalayas, maybe you can learn to slow your mind down or stop thinking, but I don't have that time. You see, your brain is designed to think with all that power. And instead of trying to stop it or slow it down, what you want to do is drive that Ferrari mine on some open highway. What that means in real life is you direct your mind instead of letting it direct you. You drive it instead of letting it drive you. Stop being a passenger of your Ferrari mind and start driving it. Drive it on to some useful thinking ways and let it think as much and as fast as it wants. Otherwise, you're just going to be fighting yourself, trying to stop the overthinking. And what you're probably doing now with all those negative thoughts, well, that's like driving your fast Ferrari on a pothole dirt road. It's going to be a bad ride in a Ferrari on that kind of road, isn't it? 